We've looked at um, postural evaluation in your uh, text, and when we did that, we said that we're comparing the posture to a vertical line. So let's just look at how we're going to do that. The vertical line, remember, came through from the outer bone of the ankle, the lateral malleolus, goes through the knee, through this bone on the hip, which is the greater decanter, through the shoulder joint, and then through the ear. So when we have that straight line, we need to look and see if the body deviates from that. So the typical types of deviation would be where the knee is too flexed, so the knee axis is in front of the plumb line, where the knee is too extended, and we would call that hyperextension of the knee joint, or genu recovatum. The hip joint should be on the plumb line, and we have two types of typical postural changes which can occur in this region. The first one was the lordotic posture, where the lumbar lordosis, this curve, is increased, and the pelvis has tipped forwards. The second one was the sway back where the shoulders stay still but the hip is thrust forwards of the posture line. Thirdly, where the pelvis remains level, sometimes we see obliteration of the lower lumbar curve here. So the lumbar lordosis is lost and that is our flat back posture. And then finally, we have the kyphotic posture where the thoracic spine is rounded and typically the head moves forwards. All right, so now we can look at this from behind. So if we turn our subject around, and it is symmetry that we're interested in now. So the line bisects the body and we start at the base and we say, well, okay, is the, f the uh, foot in its normal alignment? And if you remember, we have a photograph of the navicular drop test where we would assess the uh, medial portion, the inner portion of the foot. Are the knee creases at an equal level? Is the bulk of the calf muscle equal on both sides? As we come up here, we look at the contour of the gluteal muscles. We often don't think of the gluteal muscles as muscles themselves, but they're very important for lifting, very important for power movements. So if they are wasted, then that would be important itself. We look at the level of the buttock crease, the level of this bone, the iliac crest. And then we want to see if the spine itself is vertical. And remember, in the chart, we talked about the keyhole. And the keyhole is this distance between the arm and the side of the trunk. So if he shifts to the side, you can see that the keyhole on the right side is wider, but the keyhole on the left side has been obliterated. So that draws our eye to that particular uh, area. As we come up here, we're looking at the level of the shoulder to make sure that the shoulders are on the same horizontal level. And then when we look at the shoulder blade, the scapula, is what we don't see, which is important. So the, the scapula should be flat onto the rib cage. Typical changes occur tipping of the scapula where the inferior part, the inferior angle, becomes more prominent. Abduction of the scapula, which means that the two scapulae have moved apart. And we judge that by palpating the medial edge, and that medial edge should be no further than three finger widths from the spine. So if the scapula has abducted, it will move around the rib cage. As we come to here, we look at the level of the ears to show us whether the neck is shortened on one side and therefore lengthened on the other. Remember we mentioned as well about the increase in kyphosis, the increase in curvature at the spine. Now the ribs come in and attach to the spine, so anything which happens to the spine will affect the ribs. And we use that fact for Adam's position where we ask our subject to bend forwards. We then squat down and we take a skyline view, which means we're looking over the top here. And what we see on this subject 
is that this area is slightly more rounded than this area. So that becomes now evident in the skyline view when it wasn't evident in the standing position. So there's a little bit of an increased roundness or rib flare on the right side.